Hi everybody, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, I spent uh, half a day basically on the largest cruise ship in the world, a brand new icon of the seas, first passenger sailing on her, and uh, I thought I'd bring you my first impressions, the good and the not so good. thought about the ship to begin with. Well, first off, uh, this is the first time I sailed out of the Miami terminal and first it, it, it's beautiful. At least it's the first time I can remember. Uh, maybe I was rushed on last time and I didn't, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it, but it's a beautiful, it's a great first impression for Royal Caribbean. When you get in that brand new terminal and you come up and you see the pods up there for the propellers as you're walking in, it's, it's, it's like, oh wow, look at that. And then the ship terminal itself is beautiful, spacious, really good first impression. And I really like the design that they made for the colors and the color scheme. Even the ramps to get on the ship match the color scheme of the ship as well as the terminal. So it was really well done. It's like a rainbow color on the way in. It's actually quite nice. And it does give you a misleading feel. Now, when I was looking down the side, I said, yeah, it's a big ship, but is it, you know, any different than when I look down an Oasis class ship? It doesn't look that much bigger. And then I stepped inside. And let me tell you, the atrium when you walk in, it is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. It gives so much space. The ship is so wide that it it almost, you don't know that you're, you know, you don't know you're on a ship for sure. You feel like you're in uh, like this huge, huge complex on land. Uh, it They did a great job and I really like the design now of the atrium. It feels less crowded, a lot more space to move around. Um, many times when I'm walking through, say, an Oasis or a Quantum class ship and they have the sails on with the shop set up and everything, it, it just feels claustrophobic when there's a lot of people at Sorrento's and just crowded. Well, this has space galore. Space galore. And that was very, very impressive. Really enjoyed that. So uh, next, there are uh, obviously... The place itself is amazing. Uh, uh, the ship, the, the rooms are bright, clean, spacious. I'm in a balcony that has a slightly extended balcony because of the angle that we're on. I'm on one of those ones that have a partial where it starts to stick out a little bit and then cut in. And my balcony is perfect, nice size and everything. Bed is comfortable, stateroom is beautiful. Really liked the design of the bathroom, how large the shower is. That's a very big plus. Stand up shower, lots of room for everybody to get in. Thought that was really well designed. And then I had a chance to go around and take a look at some changes and some things that they've done. Obviously, they still have the flow rider in the back. And uh, don't let it fool you guys. Sometimes those old guys who get on uh, are much better than uh, young guys <laughs> on the uh, surf simulator. And this guy knew what he was doing for sure. Um, very jealous of him. I break my, I break my neck. I, I just I fall within like 20 seconds. Uh, so uh, if that. So hats off to him for, for that. So the surf simulator's up there. They got the sports desk up there. They have the big pool area in the back that hangs over the deck. Very, very nice. Um, I don't know how crowded it's going to get and how crowded it's going to be when passengers are on there, but there's plenty of, plenty of places for people to sit. Plenty of chairs all over the place, and that goes for everything that they've designed in the ship. And what I mean by that is even in the theater is very spacious, but I went to the aqua show last night, the ice skating show. Lots of space, lots of room, really well designed, and some seats were uh, 
with cushions, some were bench seating, some were you know, designed chairs, but lots of different varieties for everybody to find a place of comfort. And that was really, really good. And then we were just, as I'm exploring the ship, it was time to celebrate a little bit and Royal Caribbean threw up some fireworks, um, which was really nice. I thought that's a pretty thoughtful thing to do, uh, being that it's the very first sailing of their brand new ship. Of course, they're going to put up fireworks. Trouble is, they put up the fireworks at 5.55, roughly. And it's not quite dark enough. The sun had just gone behind a little bit of the buildings in Miami, the skyscrapers. So, but every firework that went a little too high, uh, like the good ones, the big ones that they want to shoot up high, kind of got whitewashed out there in the backdrops so you couldn't really see them very up you know if they were blue and red and green you could see them a little bit but if they were white it basically blended into the sky and you couldn't really see a lot of it and as uh, the fireworks continued and the sun went down a little bit near the end we got to see the final result the big big finale and that was a little better but boy if they could have just held off another 20 minutes before starting I think the fireworks would have gone off like a big, big, bigger success. I saw a lot of people standing there for the fireworks, and then once they started, they went, oh, they're hard to see, and they just walked away. A lot of people just walked away. So a little disappointing, but hey, they had fireworks. What the heck? You know, that's a, that's a not, it's nothing to do with the ship, but we still had fireworks. Um, I did see both. Well, let's start off with... Uh, Basically, I'm going to say the design of the ship is beautiful, lots of space to get around, uh, but let's talk about some of the things, first impressions that I found are strange. First thing, if when you go to the ice show, the brand new ice skating rink, they used to have it down on the lower deck and you would get to it. You know, the, the theater would be down there, and then you walk down, and you'd have this, the comedy club was down there, you had the jazz club was down there, and you'd have the ice skating rink all in the same area. Well, now, in order to get to the ice skating rink, you go through a gift shop, which leads into Playmakers, the sports bar, which then leads into the ice skating rink. Very weird. Very weird how that works. Uh, and for one thing, yesterday, we there was some football playing, obviously, last night. And so Playmakers was packed. Well, so was the ice skating show. So when the ice skating show let out, you had all the people in there watching the show walk out through the Playmakers, which just kind of melded in there a ton of people all squished in trying to get through some would stop and look at the game and boom, that and that just kind of held up everybody trying to get out and it, it just it felt like a weird design uh we'll see how that plays out in the future as far as the show was concerned it was great um really enjoyed the show very energetic lots of great you know skating numbers dancers were really good they had a special guest juggler that was there. Uh, he really added to the show. It blended right in seamlessly. So that was a really good show to watch. Next, I went to the Aqua Show. And uh, this is where a little bit of the, the disappointment comes in for the new shows. And what I'm saying is not the shows themselves. It's that this sailing is an invited only sailing. It's only people in the industry, travel agents, etc., VIPs uh, from, you know, different news media, etc., and they're here to see, you know, be introduced to the ship, but the show isn't quite ready for everybody to watch. And they per they admit that 100% that the, they're still working on the numbers. In fact, they wanted us to kind of, they were they kept on watching the audience last night to see what was working in the show and what seemed to, oh, people are kind of getting bored by that a little longer. And so we saw a few numbers, I think four altogether, of the performances that were going on. And those performances were quite good. They were really good dive numbers. There was a, an aerial dance number. It was all really, really good. Uh, trouble is, there's more coming that 
is kind of going to make this show very unique, and we don't get to see it yet. For instance, they're going to have a skateboarding show mixed in with this, with a ramp and jumps and all this kind of thing. I would have really loved to have seen that, how they're incorporating that into a aqua show, but we didn't, we, we, we don't get to see it. It's not ready yet. So that's again one of the downsides of this kind of cruise. Good news is they say they will have it ready by the time the first paying passengers in about eight days get on board. So that's good. I, I'm hoping that it's ready for everybody when they get on board. So yeah, first impressions of the ship. The shows are going to be a lot of fun. To, um, it's big. But it's, mis it's misleading on the outside. It doesn't look as big as it actually is because of how, how wide it is, how bright it is. The colors are beautiful. There's lots to do. Absolutely a ton of things to do. And, uh, you know, people just were excited to be on the ship. Much like this guy who is up on that new aerial walk that you have, that you walk around suspended over the ocean and you can hang out over the ocean. Well, sometimes you just got to dance. Sometimes the music hits you and you just got to dance. <laughs> he was having a good time. So that's just a little sign of things to come. I'll give you a full ship tour here, but I had to drop in and just give you a quick update of what I thought about the Icon of the Seas. I think it's a beautiful ship. It is definitely lots of things to do, and the production shows so far have been first rate. So I'm going to give it a, a, a thumbs up, definitely for now. A few weird design choices as far as like where Playmakers and the Aqua Show are. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the ice skating show is. But... Um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun because even in the, the surf side, the changes they made in the back, there, the, the, there's some really good dining back there, hot dogs, hamburgers, and other, you know, sugar. It's basically a, a kid's paradise back there, uh, for especially younger kids. They made some changes to the carousel a little bit, and there's still one there. It's just not horses anymore. It's more of a colorful roundabout with vehicles and flamingos and stuff like that, but... It's very a Caribbean beach vibe, and I think people are actually going to really love that. So I'm hoping that uh, everybody enjoys the ship as much as I have been enjoying it. And I will give it a, a much more thorough thing, but now that they've told me, oh, that's only part of the show, and now they're going to have skateboarders, you're not going to see that. And then by the we've got the second show that's going to be here, it's going to be wonderful too, and I don't get to see it. So Royal Caribbean, you hooked me, and now I have to book another sailing, a longer sailing, so I get to experience it all again firsthand when everything's up and running. And I am not complaining about this on this. Do not get me wrong. I'm not complaining about the Aqua Show not being ready and seeing the full thing because I didn't pay for this cruise. I paid for my flights and hotels, yeah, but they put me on the ship to experience the ship as a travel agent and so, um, yeah, I, it is what it is. Uh, it's when you pay for something and it's not ready, that's when you get upset. So I have no, no bones about this one. Like I did on the Wonder of the Sea, I was upset with Wonder of the Sea because a lot wasn't ready. But here, a lot is ready. The full ice skating show was ready. The full main Broadway show on here is ready. It's uh, only the aqua show they're kind of working on, and they say it'll be running by the time paying guests get on board. So, good job on Royal for getting all this stuff up and running. Like I said, the ship is beautiful. The staff has been wonderful. And, uh, yeah. What more can you say? First impressions of the Icon of the Seas, it is deceivingly large. It just looks like, ah, it's the same size as the Oasis. And then you step inside and you go, wow. Wow. How is it possible that this ship is this much bigger than an Oasis glass ship. How crazy is that? Well, I hope you appreciate this quick video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world and more in-depth view of the Icon of the Seas coming up in the next couple of days. Hit that subscribe button until next time. Have yourself a safe and a great vacation.